Hello, and welcome to IRC Chapter 3, Means of Egress. This first session is about the path through the house, and the entire course is based on Section 311, Means of Egress. Now, that term has been around for over a century in the codes. In my vintage codebook collection, this is the earliest that I've found the term used. And it's in the 1922 edition of the building code recommended by the National Board of Fire Underwriters. And bear in mind, that's the fourth edition. So the term has probably been around before this. Now, back to the 2021 IRC. We're going to start with section 311.1. And I'm going to read it to you verbatim before we dig in, because there's some important terms here. The means of egress shall provide a continuous and unobstructed path of vertical and horizontal egress travel from all portions of the dwelling to the required egress door. So this means we could start in a bedroom. We could start in a bathroom. We could start in a closet. We're going to start from all portions of the dwelling. And that means if you manage to climb up into your non-habitable attic to put away holiday decorations, you need a continuous and unobstructed path back out. Now this path can travel through a living room. It could travel through a kitchen. It could take you through another bedroom before reaching this required egress door. The only place the path can't go through is a garage. Now, my, why might that be? How do you regulate and require a continuous and unobstructed path in a code that only regulates permanent construction? We can't regulate where people will put their furniture and their stuff. But we can make assumptions based on known probability. Indeed, we can expect many garages to look like this, and the path to the door is blocked. Can't regulate furniture, but we can regulate rooms where we expect to see it. Now, we also know that a garage may also be obstructed by fire. Where do you think this fire originated from? We've known of garage fire hazards for a long time, and the code has long required a drywall separation or a one-hour rated wall to protect the house from the garage fire. But what else might we take from a continuous and unobstructed path that we can apply to permanent construction? No jails and cages in the house. No matter how much your teenager is sneaking out at night, a locking doorknob that can lock someone into a room is an obstruction that's built into the construction. Now there is one unwritten exception to this, and that's in the case of a zombie apocalypse. I think a little obstruction might be warranted in these instances. All right, so let's start the path from a bedroom. And the first thing we're going to face most likely is a door. Now, you probably assume that this is the door from the bedroom to the hallway, and you would be right. But there's nothing in the code stopping it from being this small door, other than an interpretation of continuous and unobstructed path. But be careful in how you apply those words. As we're going to learn in the next session, the code makes it very clear that only the required egress door is provided minimum dimensions in the IRC. Now, often we see pocket doors to bathrooms and closets, but there's nothing in the IRC prohibiting these throughout anywhere in the house. When you get into the hallway, though, this is when section 311.6 comes into play, and this is a very simple section. It simply requires that hallways be at least 36 inches wide. Now, this basement in the photo here was finished without a permit, and with a 24-inch wide hallway, clearly a problem. But please do not be that inspector that measures for that 36 inch width down between the slightly projecting baseboards. That is not the intent of the 36 inch width. Please don't do that. All right, so all portions of the dwelling have to have a continuous and unobstructed path to an egress door. No cages or jails, right? Got it. But there's more specifics now for that path from habitable levels, and that includes habitable attics and basements. See, it's not likely to have an egress door with access to grade on each level, 
And so 311.4 adds in requirements for vertical travel between habitable levels in order to reach that egress door. Every habitable level that doesn't have a compliant egress door must connect to another level that does with a fully compliant stairway or a fully compliant ramp. And we get into the details of those in a future session. So in a typical house example like this small ranch, the path from the bedroom would go down the hallway, through the living room, and out the front door. But there's nothing in the code stopping the path from being out through a bedroom. I mean, you might have trouble selling the place, but the code doesn't take a stance here. From the basement, we'd expect good and normal design to provide a path from the sewing room up the stairs and then out and through the living room again. Of course we would. But there's nothing saying that exit from the house, the one egress door, can't be downstairs. You could go from the bedroom through the living room down the stairs and then out through the sewing room in the walkout or daylight basement. But when have you ever seen this design? Exactly. The code doesn't waste its time on what ifs with little probability of occurrence. And maybe the building authorities shouldn't either. My name is Glenn Mathewson. Thanks for learning with me. This course has been provided to you by buildingcodecollege.com, where we go beyond the words.